Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Wine by the Bay TV. Today we are here in Napa, California. We're going into Spotswood. Uh, luckily Alex had arranged this for us a couple of days ago and uh, we got a chance to tour the property. This is a really great uh, iconic winery up here in uh, St. Helena, I believe. Really great spot um, and you're going to love uh, the grounds and all that we did in there. So stand by, Wine by the Bay TV. Spotswood Estate is grown from grapes right here, made from grapes grown right here in the spot. Um, it goes all the way to the tree line. You can see back there the houses and the inside the city limits of St. Louis. So the city literally just kind of wraps around us. And uh, tell me that one more time. What, what kind of fruit? Fruit, 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 fruit? Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So when they come through, they'll, they'll give it another month or two and they'll come through and they'll um, prune it right here. Got it. So that these two buds will be this year's um, shoots. Yeah. And they'll grow up right here. And is this like a, right a vertical shoot positioning kind of trellis thing, uh -huh. essentially? Yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. And they'll keep them between these wires right here and just keep them up. Um, nicely shaded, like dappled sunlight, so the grapes don't get too hot. So I'm cutting in here because uh, the audio was kind of bad in this barrel room, but um, we went in. This is on the property. There's a whole big room, well, a whole big house rather, that was original for the property that they used to store and ferment the wine. Um, as you can see, there's a ton of barrels. This was all the uh, 2020 vintage that they're kind of getting ready to go. Um, we got a chance to kind of walk around, see the mister, uh, talk with our guide, and he gave us a little information about uh, how the barrels are marked. So this was a really interesting part, and I'm going to give him a little bit of the floor here in just a second. But I just want to let you know where we are. And they're probably, you guys aren't doing a whole lot of dark toast stuff. Yeah, it was like medium. 40, yeah. Some medium plus. Medium plus. Yeah, some so, medium plus. And, how much it gets toasted will affect how much of that like vanilla, baking spice, mm -hmm. caramel kind of quality spice. Mm -hmm. so it's not the primary flavors that come from the grapes, but we add spice and, and layering and complexity. I would like a uh, thin stay barrel here, please. Medium toasting um, this year. So after we left the barrel room, we went into the tasting room, which is another house on the property, and you can see it's nicely decorated. That's a map of uh, where they put all of the uh, different vines to age and all that kind of stuff and what they're growing. Um, as you can see, it's uh, they got nice shelves and a lot of vintage wines on there, some books, um, all kinds of great stuff. And then of course they set us up at the table. Um, there is the wine. And we're going to roll into that in just a moment there. Um, the, the main thing, we tasted three wines today. Uh, we tasted the Sauvignon Blanc, uh, the Lindhurst uh, Cabernet, and then the Estate Cabernet. So uh, the three kind of main wines that they do. Um, they were all current release, obviously, and that's our tour guide. Uh, he brought in that Sauvignon Blanc, got a little bit of water, and we just kind of get our act together there. Uh, we've got the 2021 Sauvignon Blanc and the 2019 Vintage on both the Lindhurst and the spots would, and that's the labels right there. And then that's him pouring the Sauv Blanc. I mean, the Sauv Blanc was very, very nice. It was very balanced uh, for a Sauv Blanc. I didn't think it was overly acidic or overly um, lemony or limey. I thought it was nicely balanced. There's a little semi on, and when I can, I put all the, uh, all the little information that they gave us on the wine. And you can see it's very light color. It's a Sauv Blanc, obviously, and it's supposed to be that way, but it's not like it's not so so light it does have a little bit of yellow tint to it like a like a light straw which i really thought was great and then uh, again this is uh the ingredients and you can pause that if you want to kind of take a look at what's going on and that's the label Then we got into the Lindenhurst, first of our cabs. I was excited to drink this one because this is more approachable both price-wise and from a uh, drinkability standpoint when it's young. Um, you can see that it's nice and garnet, uh, not, uh, not super dark, so you can't see your fingers through it. It's an excellent wine, very, very easy to drink young. This is a 19, 
So it was just starting to come into its own a little bit, but it was easy to drink right out of the gate. Um, both of them were, but this more so. Not as much tannin, not as much grip. Um, I believe it's 77% Cabernet, and 9% Cobb Franc, and then a mix of some other stuff as well. Um, it was, like I said, very silky, very easy to drink. It was an excellent wine. Very good if you've got to open it young and you don't want to wait too long to taste. All right, here's the Spotswood Estate. This is the granddaddy. So this is it. This is the flagship. And this is the one that... And this is current release. That's correct. The yeah. 2019. So, made exclusively from grapes in that vineyard right over there. Does it mature longer in barrels? Do you hold it longer? Slightly longer in barrels, slightly more new oak. Um, Picked over there, brought into the winery, fermented in the big stainless steel tanks, um, and then we do something really interesting. We um, rerun off the top. There's actually no pressing. In this mm. wine, which wow. Is, um, oh, really? Which means we have a lot less of it. Yeah, it's expensive. It's expensive. Um, we sacrifice a lot of wine right in there. But you're talking about tannins and the texture. Um, I'm very curious to hear about your uh, impressions on this because I think the texture on this is just incredible. It's it's, the tannins are there, but they're very fine-grained, very elegant. I just wanted to take a minute to thank our hosts at Spotswood. Great time, Alex, for setting it up. I mean, I couldn't, they couldn't have been nicer. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And hit the little bell icon for updates every time we drop a new episode. Just my two cents about the Spotswoods estate. I mean, right away, the color is different. It's not as bright and purpley. It's more reddish, like a little bit more of a wood component to it. And that's the side-by-side. -side. The Lindhurst is on the left. It's very, it's a lot more drinkable young, whereas the other, while it has more tannins, you can drink now, but it'll be much better later on in its life. Um, I think they're both really good wines. Obviously, you're paying more for the estate. That's the bottle right there. I mean, I can't say enough about the winery and the tour that we had. It was a really great time. That's it from Spotswood. Thanks for watching Wine by the Bay TV, and we'll see you again next time.